Hello, Matt. Hello. How's it going on? Good, good. good. Ciao. 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 So first of all, thank you for your time and thank you for joining me in this uh, uh, series. I always ask you the guys uh, first, how and when did you learn about uh, basketball? Uh, so my dad is a National Hall of Fame coach yeah. in, in, uh, in America. And and he taught women's basketball, girls' basketball in high school. So uh, I was born on winter break. And then, you know, as soon as school started back up, I was on the bench, probably three weeks old. So uh, my mom was a statistician uh, for my dad. So I was, I was always around basketball early on and uh, just enjoyed the game at an early age. So. So it was a it is a choice for you, yeah. Because a lot of American uh, guys told me maybe the first uh, type of sport was American football in uh, America in the USA yeah. because this is the sport uh, in there. Do you have any experience uh, about this uh, game, American football? Yeah. So my dad he went to college and he actually played American football, and when I was growing up, our baseball team was really mm -hmm. good in our area. So we were winning a lot. So for me, baseball was my first sport that I really enjoyed and loved and wanted to get better at. And I just saw basketball was, you know, I'm going to 20, 30 games a year because of my dad coaching. And uh, just from then on, I was, uh, once I hit high school, I was just focused on basketball ever since. And when you decide you want to be a professional basketball player, what age was that? Uh, I went on a recruiting trip from junior college to University of Texas, San Antonio, mm -hmm. and they actually told me there that he's like, I think you can go pro. And that was the first time at like 19 years old that someone told me I could, I was good at the sport, mm -hmm. you know, I, you know, you, you have this feeling of like, I can do something more, but you don't have that affirmation from the coaches yet. And he was the first one to tell me. And ever since then, I, you know, you, you love to have passion, but like it, I became obsessed of like getting better. Are you surprised about that? Because, you know, when you first time here, hey, I, I'm too good. I'm so good about yeah. in the sport. Wow. Wow. Was it surprise you or uh, does it uh, motivate you? Uh, it surprised me at first because, you know, growing up, I never really heard that I had to go an unorthodox route of going to junior college mm -hmm. before going to division one. And from there, like, you know, some some kids don't make it out of JUCO, and you know that was the risk that I was willing to take. And uh, you know, it really motivated me once um, once I heard that from Coach that it was uh, it was really motivational and you know everything. Yeah. And you started uh, NCA in uh, Milwaukee. Yeah. And you were there. Please tell about. Uh, the atmosphere of uh, NCA games because I think a lot of uh, a lot of our fans didn't know about don't know about uh, this NCA maybe mm -hmm. watch uh, one or two uh, games but this is the die-hard uh, fans uh, but I saw and I know about this this is crazy yeah this is crazy yeah. in college um, for us usually the bigger games were the rivalry games of course uh, playing Green Bay we always mm -hmm. uh, had a a big crowd, always rowdy, always, you know, screaming, yelling, uh, which you love to play for because, you know, the fans are who give you energy when you don't have it. Uh, you could have a hard week of practice, hard week of school, and, you know, you mentally you might not be there, but, you know, the fans get you ready, and that's, that's what I enjoyed about NCAA basketball is that the fans were always going to show up and uh, give you their all for you. And that's always been a plus, uh, especially playing at NCAA, that the crowds are get involved and uh, just love the sport and just love the atmosphere that, that they provide. How was your college years? My college years? Uh, yeah, they, <laughs> <laughs> it, 
It was good. I mean, I loved college. It was fun. I, I got to learn more about myself. I think that was the biggest thing moving forward. Uh, you know, you know yourself as an athlete, but, you know, most people that you interact with are also athletes and they're very good at their own sport. Mm -hmm. But at the end of the day, like I'm still Matt Tybee. I still need to know who I am yeah. deep down to my core. And I think college is a great growth experience because you're young, you try to find uh, new methods and, you know, you fail and you, you learn from it. So uh, I failed many times in college and I just wanted to, you know, learn from my mistakes and uh, put my best foot forward always and just be the best version of myself. How big is uh, this uh, Milwaukee College? Uh, Milwaukee is actually pretty big, uh, considered it's a mid-major uh, in, in most aspects. Uh, but we enrolled would probably be like 30,000. So that's, it's a, big, it's a big school, but it just doesn't have, uh, there's a lot of commuters, like a lot of people that come from the city of Milwaukee and, you know, they stay at their home. It's, it's a nice campus. It's just uh, a lot of people are, you know, staying at home and it, it is what it is, but I had a great experience. I think anybody, I think anybody that, uh, anybody that had that experience can tell you how, how wonderful it was in, in their, in, in its own aspect. Yeah, and uh, maybe other days we spoke about uh, why is uh, so important these school years for the two days kids to this uh, mm -hmm. uh, children and uh, it told me yeah it's a very important uh, uh, part of uh, their life because uh, this uh, time you could there make uh, mistakes uh, mm -hmm. and set uh, really really serious uh, goals why do you think uh, it's so important uh, this type th this years maybe the, the college years uh, for the kids for the children um, you know school has always been important and especially my parents my dad was an educator he was mm -hmm. Uh, he was a PE teacher for 30 plus 40 years and you know for me education was big so mm -hmm. um, and you know I, I think people should dare themselves to to push their limits mm -hmm. because what's the worst thing that can happen you say you fail and you know what to what not to do next time yes and you know a lot of people look at failure as a uh, is a down achievement but in most aspects people don't even put themselves in a position to fail so if you're not really failing you know you're just kind of cruising by and I think the people that are daring themselves and pushing their limits and uh, what the the mind and body can do I think anything is possible especially if you can envision it I'm a very big in like especially manifestation especially talking about it and making things happen. Mm -hmm. You just can't say, I wanna be a doctor, I wanna do, I wanna be a professional athlete, but if you're not putting in the time and effort to, to read or even putting in uh, the time to do extra stuff for, your, for whatever curricular that you wanna do, you know, it doesn't make sense that it just sports. Yeah, yeah, exactly. I, I, could, I could imagine. And you make put and you put a lot of things about in the, in the basketball in your oh, maybe we, we, we should <laughs> break it. <because. laughs> we made really, really maybe 15 videos. And this is the first time when uh, okay. <laughs> our camera is falling down. <laughs> I don't know what is what is happening right now. So you put a lot of uh, stuff in your career because you played in Hungary, you played uh, German mm -hmm. uh, one league in uh, Italy maybe and uh, Netherlands or uh, Antwerp, yeah. yeah. Uh, place. yeah. Uh, is it hard to, to learn all in these years new culture, new systems, uh, new uh, friends maybe in the, mm -hmm. in the club? Is it hard? Is it difficult uh, for you? Uh, definitely it's my seventh year being a pro so if it's difficult by now I, I feel like there's a problem with myself um, but no I've had great teammates great coaches uh, my rookie year I was in Poch in, in Hungary and uh, I had a great Lithuanian coach that uh, that told me I need to you know push myself and get myself out into the community and see what uh, the culture is like and lifestyle is because you know, if I'm sitting in my room, I won't get that experience. And uh, I think that was great for myself to, you know, push myself out of my comfort zone. And it, it has paid off. And everywhere I go, I, I meet great people, uh, love the atmosphere and cultures that um, 
that I'm being a part of, you know, I'm not just going and saying, oh, I lived here, I lived here. Like, no, I'm within the community. I'm, you know, trying to work as anybody else is. So, uh, you know, and, you know, if I can give back by uh, giving especially a lot of energy to the city and, you know, having them come to games and be like, wow, this is an amazing, you know, amazing time. Uh, you know, that's, that's what I can do the best. Yeah, and what was your favorite country, favorite culture? Because if we imagine Germany versus mm -hmm. Italy is totally different, uh, maybe yeah. the opposite uh, type of uh, culture. What was your closest one? Uh, I think every every little place, every stop that I've been to, it's been uh, a little piece of home, mm -hmm. and you know the friendships last forever, and that's that's a great thing. And Uh, especially with social media, you can keep in touch with a lot of these guys. You can keep tabs on teams that you've been on, and um, that's that's a beauty about the sport. And uh, I felt like last year we had a really uh, tight knit group that um, we all got to know each other a, a lot deeper than um, than years past. And I think that was just the maturity level of uh, of everybody on the team and everyone buying in and stuff mm -hmm. like that. And um, Yeah, it, it would. I think Antwerp, the the size in the city, and you know, for me as a English native speaker, like it's it's easy for me to navigate through the city, and mm -hmm. um, and not to say that some other places haven't been easy to live, but I I think every experience has been amazing, and I. I I thoroughly enjoy every place that I've been to. So. Yeah, and every every country has a, a lot of uh, different uh, culture, a lot of uh, mm -hmm. different things that you can uh, learn about yeah. from yourself. And it is, uh, I think, it's a very important part of, uh, of your life. It's a life uh, long learning. Yeah, maybe. yeah, it's yeah. very very uh, important. Uh, which team or which year was uh, your most successful year? Uh, What do you think? I think uh, my second year. When I went to Belfius Mons mm -hmm. in in Belgium was our most successful year. Uh, we made playoffs, but we also made the the Cup final. We ended up losing uh, in overtime on you know last second or not a last second three, but you know put them up by four. Which you know at the end of the day, it is what it is, and yeah. you know you live to see another day you play another game so um, I would say that's probably the most memorable for sure yeah it's very very important because it gives more energy maybe more mm -hmm. uh, motivation and uh, we spoke about what is uh, important for you as a as a guy as a man when you uh, arrive a new team what is important for you as a player on the court what is uh, the most important for you what is your goals You know, when I when I come to a new team and, you know, trying to get situated, I think the best thing is to get to know everybody. Obviously, get to learn to know the names, even though um, there's definitely a, a language barrier, but you, you find ways. And, you know, I went to school to be a communication major. Mm -hmm. And the biggest thing for me was communicating with others that Uh, we got to find a common goal, and our and our goals are going to be set forth. And I think everyone knows that we want to push forward, and we want to push, and you want we want to win everything. But there's learning processes and everything like that. And everyone knows that with growth, there's pain. So um, you know, it's just staying patient, staying true to ourselves. Um, you know, bringing a lot of energy to to others and giving a lot of energy because I feel. Uh, reciprocity will be paid in full, especially when uh, the guys get to know me a little bit more, and I know them a little bit more. What what helps them, what motivates them, and um, and I'm a big energy giver, so I, I try my best to to see how I can uh, be the best version of myself for my teammates. Yeah, and I I heard and sometimes I, I watch uh, your practices uh, mm -hmm. in the in the arena, and and uh, I saw. And I uh, heard what it's you talking about because you communicate all the five on five uh, mm -hmm. games. You communicate a lot, and and uh, yeah, a lot of uh, players said us, hey, this is a very maybe the most important thing in uh, in basketball. Yeah. Do you understand or do you 
Do you feel the same? Yeah. This, yeah. this communicate, what is motivate your uh, teammates and why it's so important? Because a lot of uh, people, a lot of uh, fans think, hey, it just make uh, one more point uh, as uh, your opponent, it's just mm -hmm. this basketball. And a lot of uh, fans, a lot of people didn't know, with, uh, don't know why it's so important, the, the chemistry, the, mm -hmm. the, the locker room things. So please tell us what is so why is so important these things the communication the the friendships in the in the locker room the communication and tangible uh, I'm trying to find the perfect word <laughs> like the intangibles like you know like things that don't really show up in the score sheet but they add up over time mm -hmm. and if I can communicate what I'm thinking everyone can't know what I'm thinking on the court so the best way I can do that is to make sure that people are understanding me and mm -hmm. to know where my positioning is at. Uh, I think the, the more we communicate through even uh, if we mess up on a play or, you know, communication on defense, I think, you know, you can make up for that with your words and, you know, helping people get through and realizing and maybe they're not seeing the full picture quite yet and everyone's got a different learning process. Everyone's got a learning growth and not everyone's gonna be, you know, I can't expect myself out of others. And that's what I, you know, live by is that, you know, just because I would do it doesn't mean the next person can't, won't do it. But, you know, you have to find ways for them to, to get out of their comfort zones and, you know, be more expressive. So, um, you know, being a team player, being, you know, anything and everything for the team and you know if it's your day it's your day but you know you you'll want to see the little gains and victories for your teammates too team sport is totally different like mm -hmm. uh, no, not normal sport like uh, like running or something like bicycle or something mm -hmm. like uh, that and that's, as you mentioned uh, this will be your seventh year yep. as a pro uh, and you pick uh, one of the the biggest club uh, in uh, Hungary we will play in in BCL against very top teams, mm -hmm. uh, why did you pick uh, our team? How was uh, your summer, if it's uh, uh, possible to talk about? Uh, you know, I, I always see Falco, especially in the last few years that mm -hmm. uh, you guys have had strong BCL uh, deep runs and, you know, it's just wanting to be a part of a winning culture and, mm -hmm. you know, the club is well respected from teams all over Europe. And, you know, as a player, that's what you want. You want to go to teams that other teams are like, they can develop, they can help him, they can get him to the next level. Mm -hmm. Maybe he's not at the level that we're looking at right now, but we want, we're going to see and monitor how he does there because we respect the coach, we respect the staff, we respect everything and the, the manager, general manager, you know, the whole organization club as a whole is you know, as a moving unit and, you know, helping these guys and myself get to the next levels, you know, what we ask and what we want from, from the club. And we, we know that you guys get results. So, uh, I think everyone knows moving forward that, you know, we want results, right? Like, yeah. but it's going to take time. We, of course, yeah. it will be a very, very long season. Yeah, I think exactly. it's, it's 10, 10 months maybe. And what are your first uh, expressions about the city? I like the city, you know, uh, it's, it's my second time being in Hungary and I never got to really come out here on this side of the, the country and I've, I've enjoyed it so far and uh, the city's really nice. I get to, I can be walking distance to downtown and, you know, if you see me, say hi, say what's up, you know, I'm not shy by any means, take a picture, it doesn't matter, but, uh, you know, I, I love the city, it's been great. Uh, for myself and my wife and yeah it's been it's been beautiful yeah and I know we haven't uh, yet uh, games uh, before fans but we have opportunity on uh, Parade mm -hmm. to to meet uh, there what was your first uh, expression with uh, our fans what do you think yeah. about our Parade and uh, some... <laughs> yeah the parade was awesome I, I think the fans were are very involved and yeah. you know the club you as a club you want that you want people to like be eager for basketball season. You want to be eager to show up to games and, uh, you know, give off positive energy because at the end of the day, you know, we feed off of what, you know, bring it, people bring to the game. And, 
Um, it's the club and the team and the fans. We all work together. Mm-hmm. And, you know, we we all have to be on the same side. And um, I, I see that here. And people want to see us do well individually and as a team. So uh, a lot of positive remarks, a lot of uh, positive vibes from people. So that's that's the biggest thing is that you want to be a part of something like this. Yeah, and I know it's only uh, right now the, the summer, the, the beginning of the mm-hmm. season, but but is the the chemistry in the Lacanon because uh, now we have uh, the team have five new guys. Uh, who was the the first? Uh, <laughs> 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 who was the first uh, player you you found uh, the chemistry? You find the the tone? Uh, right away, I I talked to. Uh, I talked to Zach. I, saw, I talked to Marco, Ray, Boris, Abel. I sit. I sit near the end of the locker room, and mm-hmm. those are the guys that are around me at first. And uh, that's who I got to talk to a, a, a lot more, um, be a lot more interactive with, and uh, especially with Zach. He played in the BBL. I played played in the BBL. So there's a lot of common ground there. Ray. He's been he's been a journeyman himself, playing all around, and uh, getting getting to learn you know, his journey and his teams that he's played for and uh, the successful season that he had last year in Poland. And, um, you know, you, you want to find middle ground that you, you have con- conversation pieces for. And, you know, I think I've named just a brief few, but I, I have gotten, I've gone out of my way and try to talk to everybody mm-hmm. and try to get to know them. And, you know, what, what are they like? What are they? What is their family like? And um, you know, Abel and I—they we've had conversations because we go to the same restaurant during the day. Uh-huh. So I get to talk to him a lot more and see uh, his experiences, especially being a young Hungarian himself. I get to talk to him and see what his goals are for the future because he has big aspirations, and you know, I think uh, him and the club can can make that happen. So. Uh, very positive future for him and uh, just getting to know everybody has been a been really good yeah and a uh, little bit uh, inner things I want to uh, ask, uh, ask you mm-hmm. because I don't uh, know how many fans realize uh, your Instagram stories or, yeah. or Facebook stories. A lot of them is uh, about uh, motivation and mm-hmm. uh, motivation quotes. And uh, really day, day by day, I, yeah. I watch it. And uh, when did you and why did you started this? As a motivation for you or the, this is a motivation for your followers, maybe fans or, or friends? I think it's just to spark something in the mind of mm-hmm. in everything. It's just planting seeds. You know, and I just want to make sure that everyone knows it's okay. Whether you're feeling down, it's okay. Like, you know, we're going to get through it or you're going to get through it. If you're feeling happy, you know, you got to, I posted yesterday about, you know, uh, do something about your inner child. Everyone's got an inner child. You got to feed what has made you happy over the years, whether it's video games, whether it's, it's reading, whether it's, you know, going out and and playing soccer. And if you're not very good at any of that, it's okay. Like, it's okay to be who you are. And I think the biggest thing is just for people to realize that, you know, I want to motivate them, but it's just planting seeds so they can spark a change in their mind of like thinking positive thoughts, making sure that at the end of the day, I'm, you know, I want to be who I am. So. Yeah, this is in these time I think mm-hmm. it's very important because a lot of people see social media pictures I, I want to be there I want to be like him and, yeah. and, and something no, you, uh, you want to be as you as a very important yeah. uh, thing like uh, yourself love yourself mm-hmm. and uh, about you I think it's very for me it's very new information and very uh, interesting uh, you led the vegan lifestyle yeah yeah, yeah. and uh, first of all I want uh, I have a lot of questions uh, about it okay. uh, but the first uh, how and and why uh, so I was in Turkey and um, we my wife and I we just kind of were, were like okay let's see let's cut some meat out of red meat out of our life and let's see how long we can do it then it became chicken and then we're like okay let's let's do fish um you know i think for a lot of people 
and I'm speaking for myself, I'm not speaking for anybody, mm-hmm. uh, I had maybe not the best eating habits. I didn't know how to pair certain foods with uh, cuisines and stuff. And, uh, you know, it's easy to throw hamburger and fries on your on your plate and say, oh, I'm fueling myself. But are we, you know? And that's the thing that sparked my mind. And I had a very influ- influential friend uh, back at home that was leading that lifestyle and I for myself I was like you know maybe I need to do more research maybe I need to do more for myself I I need to be better for my teammates and you know when you have not the best eating habits for 20 plus years it it takes a toll on your body so I just felt like it was a time for change and uh, you know having a good supportive partner also helps too and that was the the biggest change in spark and uh just the more you know and you read about food and how it can influence your body your mind your thoughts um, your spirit your soul whatever you want to you know say at the end of the day um you know it's it's a very big big part of our lives because we are eating all the time so uh, you got to feel your body in the right ways and that's why I chose to live a vegetarian lifestyle. And where uh, do you found uh, recipes? Because uh, uh, maybe, you know, this uh, vegan January, we made mm-hmm. uh, my uh, fiance this uh, challenge, and after two weeks, okay, we pick uh, chickpeas, okay, we made everything what I mm-hmm. uh, should we eat, and okay, what is the next, what is the next recipe, and we didn't uh, found him, yeah. nothing. Where, where do you found these recipes, uh, or what is your favorite vegan, uh, eating vegan pieces? Um, yeah, it took a lot of time, I'm not gonna lie. It was a lot of trial and error, uh, especially when you're taking a vital protein out of your out of your life and creatine, you, you need to have supplements for it. So most people, you know, I'm going to cut this out of my life. You're like, well, let's be prepared, like, because you, you need to find alternative ways to get that. Chickpeas, beans are a great source of protein. Yes. It's a firsthand protein. I, I view uh, animals and meat and meat products as secondhand because you're ultimately feeding the, the cow, the chicken, the fish, yeah. what you want to feed it. So in order to grow big and grow strong, so you can have uh, abundance of uh, product. And, you know, for me, um, just finding the recipes online, uh, we've bought books, and, you know, just going out of our comfort zone, trying new foods. I, I didn't really eat mushrooms that much at all, and, you know, now I'm eating mushrooms, and, it, you know, it's just like the little things in life that, uh, that make you happy and um, I think food can can be one of those things if it's appropriately uh, done the right way uh, going off my favorite dish that's pretty hard because uh, my wife makes a lot of good stuff and that's just, just not me saying that and it's kind of hard to say like oh yeah I, I love this mm-hmm. um, but you know like bean tacos um, you know, we eat a lot of rice and, uh, potato bowls and that's a, and that's a huge source of good overall gut health and everything like that. And, uh, you want things that stick to your, stick to your bones at the end of the day, because you need that energy over time. And, uh, that's, that's been a great, uh, yeah, help yeah. for us. I don't know what's going on because we have a traffic jam. Oh, that's, that's <laughs> okay. Yeah. So. I think this is the one of the most uh, important I learned from you uh, right now. You must uh, push your limits. You must uh, find new ways to learn about uh, mm-hmm. your yourself. And I think it's very important as a normal man and as a pro athlete uh, also. For the last question, maybe it's not will be a question. What is your advice uh, or fans? What is your advice uh, for all people in, in Sombatai? What do you think? Just one word or just one uh, sentence is your your thoughts about what is important in life important in life is being the best version of yourself that i can't reiterate it more you know i i think the best person that can be you is you 
Um, you know, it's okay to be weird. It's okay to be uh, outside of society thoughts and um, not to an extreme, but, you know, within the parameters of, of, of good and bad, you know, you want to stay on the fine line, but just be yourself at the end of the day. And, you know, your true friends and true family members will be there for you no matter what. And, um, you got to find the right, right people, right situations. And, uh, if anything's taking energy from you, you know, you should get away from it because at the end of the day, you know, it's only going to harm you. And at the end of the day, it's all about yourself and not in a selfish way, but like you want to think about yourself a lot more than most people do. Okay, thank you very much. I, I thank you. Have a good day. I appreciate ciao. you. Thank ciao, you. Ciao. Ja, te is vizet.